YouTube. Today is the 31st of December, 2018. Tomorrow we roll in New Year. Okay. Purpose of this video is I'm going to talk about what I seen in 2018 and what I expect to see in 2019. These are my views, what I've seen, my opinions. This is not scripted, so my dates and times might not be exact, and I'm probably going to forget a couple of things. But um, yeah, here we go. 2018 was a lot of 2017. All I hear was Russian collusion. You would think after two years, shit tons of taxpayer money, countless resources and departments investigating this, you would think that they could come up with something credible. But all they come up with is allegations and talk. No proof. Do I think Russia interfered? I don't know. I'm just an American citizen. That is way above my pay grade. But you know what? With the amount of money and resources invested into this investigation, for as long as the investigation has gone on, you would think that if it was true, they would be able to figure it out. On top of that, from day one, it's been countless, countless riots, protests, demonstrations in the streets with your two hotbeds, Berkeley and Portland, Oregon. Both cities, millions of dollars of destruction done to them. You have your two groups of people in America, your left and your right, at war with each other, literally at war. And underneath each group, there is an umbrella of smaller groups. You know, your left, that covers your Democrats. It's funded by the Soros Foundation with your Antifa, your Black Lives Matter, your feminists, you know, your LBGT community, you know, and their constant attack on law enforcement from a local to federal level. You know, do I believe law enforcement can overstep their bounds? Oh, yeah. Do I believe America should be in a police state? Hell no. But we need to support our brothers and sisters in blue. Because at the end of the day, they're the ones keeping the wolves back. Keeping people out of our houses. You know. The right, the groups, the main groups, are your Proud Boys. Your Three Percenters. Your QAnon. Your Pro-Trumpers. And some shitheads in there, too, you like your white nationalists, which I don't know any true patriot that supports those assholes. This year has been a year of government corruption. You know, again, the Russian collusion. Judge Kavanaugh, I mean, that was major this year. You know, this poor man, his whole family, his birth name ran through the mud over an allegation of a woman that wasn't even credited. Her witnesses that she claimed all recanted after the investigation closed. She couldn't even remember the details of the supposed rape, you know. And that leads me into the war on men, especially white men but men in general. This anti-man, anti-masculinity movement that's going on in America is ridiculous. If you are a white male, doesn't matter your views, your beliefs, if you've been a good person your entire life, you are rape culture. If you're a man, you must promote rape. You must Say that women are, are, are a lesser species. No. Not, not one bit. But that's not what's being pushed down our throats. I can't turn on the television or watch a YouTube video without an advertisement on how masculinity is going to be the fall of the American dream. You know? Such bullshit. You have a 12-year-old kid being paid to dress and drag. To dance at a gay bar. When I was growing up, that was illegal. When I was growing up, if that was on the news, those people would be arrested. That club would be shut down. And those parents would be trying to kill the people that did that to their kid. 
Not in today's society. You know, this feminization of men, in my opinion, is going to be the demise of this country. Our own generals, General Milley, said, we are at a crossroads in American military history. Our soldiers no longer display the courage, the true grit soldiers need to win wars. Their fear is that the pussification of America has been so bad that if we ever got in another major war, they don't know if we could survive it because of weak-minded and physically men. It's bullshit. That's what I'm saying on that. We had a rough beginning with North Korea. You know, a lot of fear that we were going to go to nuclear war with them. You know, there was a accident in Hawaii where supposedly a worker hit the uh, incoming nuke button and made all of Hawaii flee and stick their kids in storm cellars and drainage. You know, first off, it's not a little flick of a button that some guy accidentally did. Okay, there's fail safes, you need authorization codes, it's not just, oops, I hit the wrong button on the keyboard and I made millions of people run for safety and panicked a whole country. No. That was one of two things. Either there was an incoming missile and that shit got shot down, or it was a test to see how the American people would react to such an attack. You know, a couple months later, Trump meets with uh, North Korea. We're all of a sudden stopping a 60-year war. Stopping the uh, production of nuclear weapons over there. You know? So that was good, I guess. You got the Syrian conflict, which is still ongoing. We're supposedly pulling our troops out. But last I heard, as of yesterday on the 30th, Trump's kind of dragging his feet on that. We'll see what unfolds there. You got Czechoslovakia telling his people to prep for a war of wars, along with Germany. German government urged all their people to stockpile food, munitions, medical supplies for an ever-encroaching war. You know, scary times. This world, not just America, the entire world. is just moments away from a major war. We are sitting in a powder keg playing with matches. Every human on earth should be worried about that. Well, we are bringing some of our troops back. You know, like I said, supposedly Syria, we're withdrawing, Afghanistan, Troops in um, Australia, too, being all withdrawn. You know, good, I guess. Or is there an alternative motive to it? Are they bringing our troops home because they're needed here domestically? And if so, is it for a foreign power? Or do they need the troops for our own people, our patriot groups, our sovereign citizens? Is that why the troops are coming home? A lot of talk in the air about that. A lot of talk in the air about troops being deployed down to the uh, Texas border. And not just to protect the border, but like, you know, I hate to say the word, but, you know, hot musket. You know, uh, a lot of people say that was debunked, but there's no legitimate truth that that was debunked, you know. Call me a conspiracy theorist if you want, but it is what it is. You got China threatening to fire and ram our naval fleet in the South Pacific. That's pretty big in itself. Oh, and they're talking about taking over Taiwan and the Philippines, which are both our allies. 
You know, a lot going on, a lot of tension in the world right now. You got our economy. You know, it was going great beginning of the year. You know, and we're still, you know, we have the lowest unemployment in all categories. Men, women, black, white, Mexican, Asian, gay, all of it. Record high unemployment. Record number of people working. Great benefits. Bringing small businesses back to America. Shutting down NAFTA. You know, great things in my opinion. But it doesn't matter who's in power. Trump, Mickey Mouse, whoever. The damage has been done. Tens of years ago, our economy will never get better. We will, in our lifetime, see a complete economic collapse. There is no question about that. No question. Our dollar is worth pennies to what it was 50 years ago. And what's the solution? Not just Trump's administration. Obama, Bush, all of them. Print more money. Just keep on printing that cotton. There's no assets backing it. There's no gold. There's no silver. There's nothing backing our currency. And it will collapse. We have seen record drops in our stock market. Dropping three, four, five, six hundred points in a day. Oh, but it came back 100 points. So what? 100 from 600, you're still down 500 points. It ain't nothing but a ploy to get people not concerned about the economy. It's fat cat bounce, that's all it is. But, I digress. That's just politically. This year has been a rough year for Earth. The entire Pacific Northwest. And West Coast has been on fire. You know. Just. I, I live here in eastern Washington. And people were walking around with masks and gas masks all summer. Because of the fires on the west side of the state. In Oregon and in California. And I'm not talking about the direct energy ones in paradise. We're talking about the ones in summertime. You know. Uh, the paradise fires. That was no forest fire. That was an attack on our country. By who knows who. Could be our country, could be another country. Shit, it could be aliens. I doubt it, though. Um, but that was direct energy weapons. Thousands of people still missing from those fires. But, what, they say the number's only 80 dead? Bullshit. Whole East Coast, floodings. The entire South, floodings. Hurricane after hurricane after hurricane, flooding after flooding after flooding. I mean, the world's telling us something. Maybe we've overextended our stay. Or, maybe it's uh, governments. Maybe it's DARPA controlling the weather. Maybe it's all them chemtrails that they keep on spraying in the skies. Maybe it's their uh, planted depopulation, like the Georgia Guidestones. Who knows? All these things happened in a short year, made this year fly by. What I see for 2019, it's not very bright. And like I said, one year without food and water, they predict 90% of Americans will die. Whether it be starvation, thirst, natural disaster, disease, or just us killing each other. You know, if you haven't read the book, One Second After, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Anyways, I don't know what else to say. Like, comment, share, hit that notification button. You know, tell me your views. What do you think is coming in 19? I just don't have a good feeling. Be prepared. Mentally and physically. We're all in this together. Alpha Survival out.